Hello, welcome back to the videos. Um, I was thinking about a new topic for a short series and pentatonic scales seems to be a topic that appears a lot on forums on various websites like the Banjo Hangout and most of my students that are interested in learning theory eventually we get to the to the topic of uh, pentatonic scales so it's something that uh, most musicians when they get into theory are going to encounter and they're going to want to know what they are and how they work so I thought we'd just spend a few lick of the week slots to talk about finding pentatonic scales on the banjo and some application for you know how and why you would use them when you play music on the banjo now I, I look back on the lick of the week videos to make sure I hadn't covered this topic and I think there was one video and it was in the topic of theory for banjo so you could go back and look at the topic theory and I think part six of the theory series I talked briefly about what pentatonic scales are and how to find a simple pentatonic pattern you know in a couple first couple of frets and that is one way to approach playing pentatonic scales which would be to find the notes of the scale uh, as individual notes say in single string style but being that most bluegrass players start with three finger scrugs even if you branch into melodic most players start with uh, scrugs and you're using chord shapes a tremendous amount in stroke style and anybody that knows me and knows my teaching style knows that I'm kind of a chord fanatic so what I like to do in this video is present uh, a systematic way for you to locate any pentatonic scale you need based on the chord shapes that you already know kinda of like we did with chord groupings in another series where we looked at finding all the chords you need in a convenient group you can also find pentatonic scale notes in and around the three shapes that you know. So let's start with majors in these videos and maybe then we'll do minor pentatonic in a different video. But uh, so let me give you a zoom of the fingerboard and again for just a basic recap a pentatonic scale is the first, second, third, fifth, and sixth. One, two, three, five, six from a normal scale pattern. So if we look at a G scale for instance, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, that's you know the eight note pattern for a G scale. If we kick out uh, the two notes that we don't need, that would be C and F sharp would not be in this pattern. So we'd have G, A, B, D, and then E. Or G, A, B, D, E. Now, of course, you saw me play the G scale melodically. Or I could play it single string. So when I play a pentatonic version of that scale, I'm just kicking out C and F sharp. Now, that is one approach to finding them, but since we're talking about chord shapes in these videos, let's look at the three shapes. Let's look at the F shape. Now, the nice thing about chord shapes on your banjo and G tuning is that when you hold a shape like this G chord, you already have three of the five notes from the pentatonic scale under your fingers. Wow, that's pretty convenient. So you think about it. A major chord is the first, third, and fifth notes of a major scale. So we have G, B, and D. And another G, a left over here, but G, B, D. So if you think about G pentatonic being G, A, B, D, and E, the only two notes that you're missing from the pentatonic scale when you hold a major chord shape like this is you're looking for the second note of the scale and the sixth note of the scale. Alright, so let's use this F shape in this video as a template. Let's see if we can locate the G pentatonic scale in and around the chord shape. Okay, the, the most obvious notes are the ones you're holding. G, B, D and here's another G. Now here's another nice thing about chord shapes, and I'm going to give you a close-up. Even if you can't remember all this theory, even if you could not remember that a pentatonic scale is one, two, three, five, six, and if you couldn't remember the scale notes from the G scale, which means you'd have to know what a G scale is, you'd have to memorize G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. That's a lot of theory to take in. Even if you can't remember any of that theory, you can use the chord shape as a template that will allow you to locate a G pentatonic scale without even knowing the notes or the names of the notes. All you need to know is 
where are the sounds from that pattern in and around this shape. So let's do that as an example. So I'm going to start with this as the first note. We'll call this the first note. And again, if you're into the theory part, that's great. If you're not, you can just say this is the first note of that pentatonic scale. You don't even need to know the name of it. But I'm going to call it out. There's G. Now for A, you will find that A is not in the shape you're holding. It's not one of the notes. And it's not very close by, but it's not too far away. So I have a couple of options for that A note. I can move the fourth string up a whole step. There's my A. Or I can drop my third string back two frets. I'm going to go back to the third string note at two. So I'm going to have G, A. Now I'm going to return to the shape because there's my B, B. The next note is D which I'm holding here with my index. So if I do this individually, G, A, B, D. Now where's my E? If you remember back, if you did look at the chord groupings video, you remember the relative minor chord, E minor, is built into G. All I have to do is pick this ring finger up. Well that happens to be the note you're adding to make that E minor chord, an E note. So if I play this as a scale, I can go G, A, B, D, E. And then if I play this note again, I could go up to the next note, which is G again. And then if I wanted to, I could go two frets higher and there's an A. Now again, the, the A note or the second note from the pentatonic pattern is going to be either on the fourth string or on the third string. You can tell they're the same note in the same octave. Now if I go to this A note, I've crossed over to the second octave. So let me see if I can play a G pentatonic scale across this shape. There it is. It's sitting in and around the shape. So the shape has become a reference point. You already have three of the notes. There's a note in the, in the next octave. And the only notes you need are the six, which is here, and the two, which could be here or here. Now, watch how this is so convenient and so logically laid out. If you wanted to play an A, A major, A pentatonic scale, without even knowing the notes of the scale, which is good to know, I think, at some point, but at this point, if you're just trying to find these notes, then you could follow the template that you laid down for this shape, and you would go... There's the first note, and I could go here for the next note, or here, I'm going to go here. So here's the first note, here's two, here's three, okay, here's five, six, one, two, three, five, six. And again, I'm not calling out string numbers, I'm calling out the notes of the scale, one, two, three, five, six. So even without knowing what an A scale is, you could play an A pentatonic scale. And I could resolve it here if I wanted to. There's A pentatonic. So you could repeat this in all 12 major keys. Just keep going up a half step at a time. Here's C. I'm trying to stay in the camera shot here. C pentatonic. Oops, wrong way, John. Let's go back the other way. There we go. And C pentatonic, again, would require you, if you wanted to tell somebody what the notes of C pentatonic were, you'd have to know the notes of a C scale, and then you'd have to be able to count 1, 2, 3, 5, 6. Instead of doing that, when you're playing, you don't really have time to think about the notes that much. You would just go, there's the first note. And then I'll have to go here or two frets back. I'm, I'm going to choose to use the third string two frets back out of the chord shape as my go-to note. But if you want to use that note, you can. This would be D. And then you just keep going up the neck. Anywhere you place this F shape, you have a movable, transposable pattern to find a pentatonic major scale. Now obviously that's not the only pathway you could use, but 
I'm choosing to use these chords that we're using all the time for other things anyway in stroke style. You're using chords to play rhythm backup. Even if you're a melodic player, you still need chords to play backup. So I like to teach my students how to find these scales in and around something that they're using all the time anyway because not very many beginner students are playing full-fledged single-string solos. So you don't need to practice single string scales up down the neck, you know, linearly in that style. I think it makes more sense to use the shape. Now what about the D shape? Let's talk about that. I'm going to reorient, reorient my camera a little bit lower. So what if we're playing out of this shape? I'll, again, I'll use G. So if we're playing G major here, where would we find those five notes from the G scale here? And again, I'm going to call them out. One, two, three, five, six. G, A, B, D, E. But we don't need the notes. We just need the shape for riff. So this happens to be the one. That's G. Here's your D, which is five. This would be three, your B. So we need to find an A and an E note and then play G, A, B, D, E, or one, two, three, five, six. Okay, I'm going to play them out of order because I don't really want to start here because that's my G note. But remember we, when we were playing this shape, we found that you could go up two frets from here, here's G, and find an A there. Of course, that was a different shape we were working out on. Let's reuse that note. Let's use that for A. There's A. There's B. There's D. And we already know that this is an E note because our relative minor is built into the major chord, so we know that's the location of the sixth note. So there's six. This would be one. Now if I want to play the bottom half of the chord, I would go here for A and here for B. So if I get my fingers out of the way, I could go A, B, D, E, G, a, B. This will allow me to play a pentatonic scale for G right across this shape and never really leave the shape. And as scrotes players, we're already used to manipulating this shape. You know, we'll do partials of it. We'll, you know, slide around into the notes. There's a lot of things that we do with the shape that require us to shuffle our fingers around. So why not do it for a pentatonic scale? Again, if I wanted to move this anywhere on the neck, I now have a transposable position for all 12 major keys because we know this one shape can be, you know, pushed around the fingerboard and every time you move it, you're playing in a different chord. So if I wanted to play A pentatonic, just like we did A pentatonic this way, I'm just using a different shape for reference. Now I would go back here, this would be the two, the three, the five, the six, the one would be here, and then the two and the three here. So even without knowing the scale notes for an A scale or what the pentatonic notes are, I'll just follow this template. And I could keep dragging this around, here's A, here's B, B major. And all those patterns you hear me playing are just those five notes from that associated scale, in this case an F scale, the first, second, third, fifth, and sixth notes of the F scale. But if you get familiar with this pattern, you can play that pattern without even knowing the notes you're playing as far as the names go. But you will know that it is a pentatonic scale. All right, now what about the bar chord? And again, I think I'm going to reorient the camera just a little bit. So let's say we're playing G out of a bar chord. Where would we find those five notes in relation to this bar chord? Which at first seems like it's limiting because you're using one finger to hold the shape. But the advantage of a bar chord is you have all these other fingers available. You have all your fingers available pretty much except the bar finger where in the other shapes you have to shuffle around a lot. 
So let's use the fourth string as our starting point. That's a D. E would be here, so that's five, six, one is here, the third string. Okay, that would be two, A. B would be here. And then D would be the bottom string. And then E would be here. So I, I can actually go across this bar chord really quickly. So I'd be going from 12 to 14, 12 to 14, and then 12 on the second to 12 on the first to 14 on the first. Now if I wanted to play that A major, so if I wanted to play A pentatonic, Any order of those notes, I can shuffle them up in any order I want. So, again, that is a transposable 12 major keys with that one shape. You can just keep moving it around. Here's F pentatonic. And if you don't like holding the bar, you could try to use multiple fingers. But either way you're you're arriving at the same goal which is to play those pentatonic scale notes. Now one thing that's kind of humorous and also true is when you play a pentatonic scale it sounds like traditional Chinese music because traditional Chinese music is based on what? Pentatonic scales. So if you were to play this pattern for a Chinese musician, they would recognize it instantly and they'd probably be able to play along with you on their traditional Chinese instruments uh, almost immediately because they're familiar with that pattern. But now when we're playing bluegrass, old time, pop, blues, country, you know, we're not trying to string them together in patterns that sound like Chinese music per se. But uh, other cultures like Chinese cultures, their you know pentatonic scales are ingrained in them as folk musicians uh, over there where they live. And we also use these notes a lot. We just use them in different combinations. The main thing is that the way we use chords playing in a major key is you know going to be different than Chinese musicians. But we're also using these notes a tremendous amount to play melodies, to play licks, all the things that you know we play on the banjo. So uh, in the next video, what I thought we would do is start looking at immediately application for the banjo. So how do I apply these pentatonic scales now that I found them in and around the three shapes? How do I use those to find, let's say, melodies, which is, I think, the number one reason in our kind of music you should even attempt to play pentatonic scales across these shapes. Because if you just play the pentatonic scales by themselves and you get good at it, but you don't know how to use them musically, they're not much good. It's kind of like learning the alphabet, but you don't know how to combine them to make words. They're not really doing you much good. So the first, I think, the most important application for pentatonic scales as a player is to use those notes to find melody notes. So we'll examine some songs and see if we can use the chord shapes as kind of a, a template or roadmap and we'll move around the neck and play melodies in different areas of the neck in different keys and you'll see immediately how valuable these scales are to finding melody. So I appreciate you watching the video. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks.